Good day, I wrap scene with your metals market wrap up for this Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020, time about 5.15 p.m. Central Time. And as usual now, I'm letting the markets reopen for like the Wednesday session. So at least see what the first quotes of the evening are and we get to see the chart action fill in a little more. Now we're gonna start getting payroll data the rest of the week from ADP, then the jobless claims, then of course, the end of the last month, what the payroll numbers, the job numbers actually look like. The first guesses are around a 19.5% unemployed. That's pretty big, obviously. The question is, when is the end? On the energy markets, I took a look at the API numbers, and you had a net build of about six, seven million barrels, but it's in the right direction. The build is happening in gasoline and heating oil, and the drop at least happened on the API in the crude. Now, the EIA numbers come out in the morning. The guesstimate is that the refineries are only running at about 72%, 73%. We'd like to see that number come up. If that comes up, it means that more Crude will be used. It means that people will be driving, airplanes may be moving, trains moving, so on and so forth. This is what you hope to see. Obviously, the metal markets are looking at the, the world repercussions still going on, of course, uh, concerning Mr. Floyd, and uh, it continues on city after city, more, more scuffles. Uh, the question is, when does it start dying down and when does the market start addressing the issue? So look for all that. And that's a lot, that's a big mouthful. But as you can see in the, uh, in the metal markets, they did break along with lower markets in the dollar index. Now that was interesting because the dollar down and the metal still correcting. Off the most high close that we've recently had in gold, which was 1756.30, we're now down roughly $30 an ounce. We still haven't gotten through these numbers. You might, then you can get a further correction. And just back there, in case you're interested, this number here was uh, on a closing basis, 1,790, and that was for May 1st, so a month ago practically. That's where you were. You're still $25 ahead of it. When we look at the action, what I pointed out to you yesterday, I'm gonna stick with. I think the market is caught in a trading range from this point to right here back and forth action. The swing line is not trending. You have a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. I'm looking for a battle around the 18 day average of closes. That number is right here in red and that's what I'm looking for to develop. Now, the other numbers that I will look for are the Bollinger Bands, which are these black lines. Because you're starting to do some sideways action, they should start coming in in a few days. It'll take a few more days than a day or so action if you don't get a big move one way or the other. Support right now, 1707.90. Resistance on the band, 1771.80. When we take a look at momentum, it's pointing down. So what did it do from yesterday? Well, this is how momentum looked yesterday. It's not really different. The market dropped a little more, as you can see. Tonight, you're getting a little bounce. I'm still gonna look for that market to drift around that 18-day average of closes. The August gold-silver ratio, well, got a little bounce, but that's to be expected, and now it's trying to come back with the silver market, maybe having gotten overdone during the day. Silver today was down a whopping 56 cents. The market kept the embedded reading even into the close. It still has it tonight, so I'm still looking for support in the market. If you lose that reading with the red line closing back under 80, it's just the red, that's all I care. Then I'll look for price in the 18-day average to attempt to run at each other. Barring that, I still see support in this market, and I, th I still think the trade is buying it. I couple that with copper. Copper is stuck at the upper Bollinger Band. It rallies ever so slightly into that area. Today it was up two cents, the day before up four and a half cents. So now it's starting to gradually question, can it keep going there? You're very overbought. If it breaks, the first support should be the 100 day average of closes, then the 18. You're still stuck in this pattern though of a lower low and a higher high with the refusal at this point for the market to have two settlements up and over the upper Bollinger Band to call it a complete breakout. It is grinding itself higher, which is still quite bullish. In the platinum market, momentum drifting to the downside. The pattern is not one of a, a trend yet. You have a lower low, 
a higher high, support coming in at the combination of 853.90, the 100-day average, and the 18-day average at 849.50. Now, the market doesn't look ready yet to get what's called a bullish crossover, where the 18-day close is over the 100. You need a good rally off of this, and that could set that all up as early as, uh, let's see, tomorrow will be Wednesday, as early as Thursday. It wouldn't surprise me if the market tries to do that. In the Palladium market, I wouldn't be surprised if you just drift back and hang around this 18-day average of closes. What the market's trying to do is while you get one close under it, you come right back to reject the downside bias, and you're just drifting by these markets. Now, as I'm reading the markets and I'm reading the fundamentals, yes, anything can drop, but factories are reopening. While we have all this terrible social uh, unrest in cities, as you get away from the cities, and there are suburbs having a lot of it. The Chicago area is blowing up in these uh, problems. New York area is doing the same. So I can go on and on. But factories and people want to get back to work. They're humming. And as they do and as the automakers start making cars and people with their pent-up demand to get a new car, and there's going to be deals galore, try to imagine how that works. And that, that tells you if there's going to be deals, you have new inventory maybe, where the new car year model, don't we normally get those around September? So a lot of talk as to what's going to be, how they're going to move these uh, products, what's going to happen. Dollar index, I told you I suspect the breakout to the downside. You've got one here. The market is trying to develop an embedded reading. As it keeps coming down, it's going to find on uh, sharp rallies resistance now from the 98.90 to 99.37 level. I'm looking and already considering the fact that I think the 18-day average in a week or so, if this market doesn't have to drop much more, that 18-day average is going to try a bearish crossover in that market unless you get really really sharp rallies here. So you put it all together, you try to figure out the game plan, and that's what we try to do. If you'd like, go to our website, www.irapstein.com under the free offers. You'll see everything from our charting software to my commentary, written, oral, daily, all through all, all that, our morning subscriber videos, our afternoon ETF spider videos. Give yourself a try with it. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.